So if you're a small business owner, online marketing, promoting your brand online is so important these days. And one of the most popular platforms, of course, is LinkedIn. That's what we're talking about this week with the LinkedIn expert, Adam Houlihan. That's coming right up. Okay, so if you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, you're probably grappling with all kinds of things with your social media marketing, your online marketing. One of the key tools you need to be looking at is LinkedIn. Why? Well, today we're talking to LinkedIn expert, Adam Houlihan. So welcome, Adam. Thank you for coming along and sharing your expertise. Thanks, Rob. It's uh, fantastic to be with you and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, if you guys don't know Adam, you need to follow Adam. Maybe we'll put some links down below to, uh, you know, to your LinkedIn profile, of course. And you actually do a lot on Facebook. We might ask you why in a moment. Um, but Adam, maybe we can sort of uh, pick your brains a little bit. So as a small business owner, what should we be doing on LinkedIn and why? Well, Rob, um, you know, LinkedIn, if we just sort of step back, you know, LinkedIn, you know, is obviously a, a great platform to, to utilise. But regardless of the platform, the reality is, you know, as, as small business owners these days, we actually need to have two brands at least, which is a personal brand and a company brand. And LinkedIn just happens to be an amazing platform to uh, build both of those uh, in, in one place. It's also where you know, the high majority of uh, most of our uh, you know, uh, ideal clients or um, uh, partners uh, that we want to work with are hanging out. So you know, the reality is, of course, the most important platform to be on is not necessarily LinkedIn. It's the platform that you know, the people you need to connect with are on. And uh, LinkedIn is just highly likely to be one of the, the most uh, uh, likely ones that the very high majority of those people are going to be on. That's a really good point. And, and I alluded to the fact that you're very active on Facebook. So tell us why that is. <laughs> well, Rob, the, I'd, uh, I'd say I'm only very active on a Facebook group, uh, yes. not so much on Facebook itself. Now, sure, we, you know, we have um, a company presence on, on Facebook. Um, but uh, I, I can't, to be honest, just between you and me, and let's not tell anyone, uh, I don't really spend any time on there. Our team does. But um, the LinkedIn group, uh, sorry, the Facebook group is, uh, I do spend a lot of time on. And the reason is just simply because, you know, one of the, the best things we can do in building a community um, is, is exactly, you know, being able to interact with people uh, in, a, in a strategic and uh, functional way. And the reality is that uh, LinkedIn groups just aren't that good. Uh, there's a lot of great features about LinkedIn. Uh, groups just isn't one of them. And so we always have our group on, on Facebook and we, and we always recommend to our clients to, to you know, be more active in a group sense on, on Facebook, but in you know, the day-to-day the -day content creation and everything that they do is, is, is on LinkedIn. Fair enough. So, so can anyone join your Facebook group? Uh, pretty much, as long as uh, as long as you're not a Bitcoin trader and yeah. uh, or a spammer or, <laughs> or any of those things, uh, we have a, we have a zero tolerance to that. Uh, so yeah, very good. Uh, first first offence and, and you're out of there. But yeah. beyond, other than that, uh, all are welcome. Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll have a chat offline and and maybe I can persuade you to uh, share that link and we'll put it down below the video. Okay, so let's get back to LinkedIn. Um, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people making with LinkedIn? Probably, Rob, one of the, uh, let me give you the top three. So the, the, the number one is that they treat Facebook the same as other platforms, uh, meaning that- well, They uh, treat LinkedIn the same as other platforms. Yes. So yeah. let's just, you know, I'm not, not that I'm looking to name any specifically, but, um, you know, there, there's a specific way that we, we interact and do things on, say, Facebook and, and how we do things on Instagram. Uh, and a lot of people treat LinkedIn exactly the same as that. And the reality is that, uh, you know, LinkedIn is a very different uh, platform. And I know you know this very well. Uh, even down to the type of content you use. As an example, you're quite possibly watching this on YouTube uh, and, you know, a long, uh, longer type of video uh, presentation on YouTube is totally fine, totally expected. Uh, you will die a, a death of a thousand cuts if you try to share videos on LinkedIn that are, you know, more than two minutes long. 
So, so the number one is, is kind of not having a strategic strategy specifically designed for LinkedIn. Uh, number two is, uh, and again, Rob, I, I know from previous discussions, you, you've uh, experienced this, is the, the old school thing of where people think that LinkedIn's all about just uh, connecting and pitching to, to people. Uh, what it really, its real power is, as we talked about earlier, is, is building yourself a personal brand and a company brand and how you do that is really through high level, a high value, I should say, content. LinkedIn's very much a content driven platform now. All, a lot of their algorithms are favoring content creators uh, and are very much punishing the, uh, the old, um, you know, connect and pitch type of approach, which uh, I'm sure you'll agree is actually a good thing. Uh, and, and the third one is, is really, um, I gotta be careful how I say this, but um, it's expressing your views in the wrong way. Uh, so, you know, your political um, uh, opinions, religious opinions, things like that. Are, um, it's interesting enough, like when I say this is a mistake, it's potentially something you don't see a lot of. And the reason, the reason is that uh, LinkedIn probably won't stop you from posting that content, they're going to make sure nobody sees it. Uh, so the algorithms are quite, uh, you know, adept at working out what type of content uh, it is, and they suppress content uh, reasonably effective. And now every, when I do say that, Rob, often people will say to me, oh, but I, I saw this post that had, you know, 100 uh, comments or 1,000 comments or whatever. There, for every one of those you see, I guarantee there was another 99 you didn't see uh, because LinkedIn's algorithms just suppressed it out of your feed. So they're the top three. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I mean, keep, keep it business focused. You know, it, it's not Facebook. It's not Twitter. Um, it's interesting where you say, um, you know, make your content specifically for LinkedIn, because that, that was a lesson, I guess the penny only dropped for me a couple of years ago. We, we produce lots and lots of videos for YouTube, and, and you're probably watching this on YouTube. Uh, and I have a really great editor. And, and what he would do is he would maybe take a 20 minute video and he'd pick a 90 second segment. And we'd put that on LinkedIn and we'd be saying, for the full video, go to YouTube. And then the penny dropped. Why are we sending people to YouTube? You know, we actually need a 90 second complete piece of content for LinkedIn. You know, so it's a, it's a different video. And that, that's what we do now. So I mean, that, that's a great point. And, and I think the, the key thing that I learned as well recently is the difference between different platforms, because YouTube is a search engine. So if I'm if I'm searching on YouTube for, you know, what to do with my LinkedIn account, I don't mind finding a 20 minute video and step by step on this is how I do it. But LinkedIn is like a newspaper. It's a news feed. So you've got to grab someone's attention and, and they're going to have a short attention span. So uh, really great points there. Excellent, Adam. Yeah, you, make, you make very good points there, Rob. That it's 100% yeah. correct. And uh, you know, 90 seconds to under two minutes is the sweet mm. spot for videos. Yeah. And, and it's very hard at first, you know, doing videos that short, but you, you get used to it, I think. Um, so what are some of the, the features of LinkedIn that you really like? What, what are some of the features maybe that people are not aware of that we ought to try out? Uh, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, they're, they're constantly updating and, and releasing new ones. Right now, one of the, the, the best ones is uh, called Creator Mode. Mm -hmm. And it's quite possible that you don't have access to it yet, but to, to, to work out whether you do have it or not, you just go to your um, your account on LinkedIn or your profile on LinkedIn. Doesn't matter whether you do it on desktop or, or mobile, and you look at the dashboard. Uh, there's a dashboard section that only you can see, and down in the that dashboard, it'll say Creator Mode and Off. Um, if that's there, literally all you have to do is is uh, act, toggle it to on, uh, and it'll activate. Uh, what that actually allows you to do, Rob, now is, um, uh, without getting too technical on it, uh, you can actually have a short intro video, 30 seconds, and it, it, it literally is hard limited at 30 seconds. 31 second long and it won't load, so it has to be at 30 seconds or less. Uh, you can go on my profile if you want to have a, a look at it. If you'll see the, uh, the profile image of, of myself, and you can actually click on the profile image and the video will play. 
there's other features and benefits of, of creator mode as well, uh, but it's a fantastic way for you to be able to just, um, you know, uh, animate, I suppose, your profile and to quickly, you know, give people a, an insight into the, you know, why they want to connect with you. What's the value that, uh, you know, you're going to be sharing on LinkedIn. So that's the creative mode is probably one of my favorites. The other one is uh, LinkedIn polls. So the, the LinkedIn polls feature, uh, it's, well, it's not that new now, it's been around for a while, but uh, one thing you'll, I'll guarantee you is that you will get two to 300 times uh, more interaction through a poll than you would a standard piece of content. Uh, and the reason for that is that, you know, LinkedIn is, as you know, shared earlier, is very much becoming a, a, you know, a real content platform and they actually uh, favor content creators and they know that polls are something that keeps people on the LinkedIn platform. So one of the worst things you can do is like you talked about earlier, Rob, was like, you know, have uh, some content and say, you know, for more information, click here, which if that takes people off the LinkedIn platform, then clearly LinkedIn doesn't like that. They want you to stay on platform. So they will punish a post that does that. But in a, in a poll, it clearly keeps the conversation on LinkedIn uh, and people can either, you know, click one of up to four uh, standard responses or they can engage more, you know, with you as the author. Uh, and as you'll, you'll see often that, um, you know, there's, you know, polls have a, a, lot of, a lot of engagement and that's because LinkedIn by default is showing them to more people in your, in your, or your sphere of connections. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, I have to confess, I love polls. You know, I'm, sc I'm scrolling through the news feed and it's human nature, isn't it? We want to share our opinion. We want to have our vote. And I, I probably vote on four or five polls a day about all sorts of things, but it counts as engagement. So it, it's really good for your profile. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, and, you know, if you're very strategic, I, I mean, let's, let's, be, let's be fair, um, you know, I see a lot of kind of in, inane sense. Oh, yeah. Do you prefer cats or dogs or whatever? I mean, what's, exactly. Yeah. Um, but realistically, you know, if, you, if you're very strategic in the way that you use your polls, you can generate a lot of, um, you know, really good conversations mm. with people about, you know, um, yeah, other ways you can help mm. them or... Um, so yeah, it's yeah, a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, really no different to any other platform, to be honest, mm. but LinkedIn comes down to having a, a really, uh, focused strategy mm. with an outcome, uh, yeah, that you're, you're working towards, and then your content has to be kind of, you know, uh, working towards that outcome as well. It's not just content for the sake of content anymore. Uh, it has to be a real strategy behind your content. And I actually do quite a few polls and I find them valuable. Um, so I'm letting the cat out of the bag here, but I, I, I just ran a poll on, uh, oh, if we're going to start doing some more webinars, what, what length of webinar do you like? And I gave people four options. And what's really interesting is because I'm the author of the poll, I can see who's voted for which option. So I can see my true target market is actually not the highest ranking on the poll. So I'm, I'm, you know, I want to engage with sort of more senior people in businesses and I can see which ones they prefer. Uh, and then, you know, there's a different option where it seems to be mainly students and they want a webinar of this length. So it's a, a really quite a powerful tool if used well. It is another, another good example is, uh, you know, I know a number of authors um, who will use the poll features to either test three or four uh, different versions of the title of their book or taglines yeah. or, or things like that. And, uh, you know, you get really valuable intel back from, you know, hundreds, literally, you know, potentially hundreds, if not thousands of people that, yeah. uh, you know, may, it's one thing, you know, especially all of us authors to, you know, come up with what we think is a great title. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's the, the, the proof of the, the values in the opinion yeah. of others. Polls uh, are it's, it's, it is a great platform. So here's the ultimate question. Is LinkedIn the best platform to be on for business? Well, it's uh, it's a loaded question, Rob. Uh, and uh, let me answer it like this: uh, it it's and I kind of already alluded to uh, it. It is provided your ideal client is is active on LinkedIn. So, as an example, um, if you were say a um, uh, a cleaner. 
uh, run a cleaning business, um, then you know maybe LinkedIn is not the the best platform unless you do corporate uh, you know, cleaning for. Uh, in fact, one of our one of our most successful campaigns we ran with a client was around you know, corporate cleaning. Mm. Uh, however, the reverse of that would be if you if you are just looking to connect with uh, mums and dads who want to spend you know want you to come in for two hours to clean their house then no, it's probably not. So, so the, the answer to that is it, it is the best platform. I'm not saying that it's only a B2B platform because it is not. Uh, but what it means is that your ideal clients have to be active on the, on the platform. And if they are, and you have the right uh, content-driven strategy, then by far it is what probably the, the most effective platform you can yeah. use as private provided of course as i said you're also kind of building a personal brand and a, and a company brand to to accompany it no well that, that's great uh well that's fantastic advice um adam really appreciate that um maybe just before you go um i mean you you actually your business is actually helping people with their sort of linkedin strategies and things isn't it so you know maybe some people watching this who who would like to reach out what's what's the best way for them to do that yeah, Rob. Just yeah, obviously connect with uh, connect with me on on LinkedIn is, is one way. Uh, you can go to our website. It's just just prominence.global. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a um, you know contact uh, feature on on the website there. Yep. And uh, yeah, easily, those are the, the two simplest ways to, to get yeah. in contact. And uh, you know, our team will get back to you with uh, a bit of information yeah. that you can take a look at. Okay, well, that's that's excellent. And uh, thank you again for joining us, Adam. Um, you know, there's a little bit of secret sauce involved, I think, with LinkedIn, and you're certainly one of the best guys around uh, in guiding people on what to do with LinkedIn. So we really appreciate your time. And uh, whichever channel you're watching this on, if you're enjoying this video, uh, do think about subscribing if you're not already subscribed. So generally down there, you'll find the red subscribe button. And if you hit the bell, you also get notified every time we have a new video coming out. That's if you're watching this on, on YouTube. But uh, and do comment down below. I mean, what success have you had with LinkedIn? Have you had, um, you know, really good success B2B on other platforms? You know, what are some of the challenges you've had with LinkedIn? We'd, we'd love to get that feedback. So, uh, and I'll make sure that we put those links so you can connect up with, uh, with Adam as well. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Adam, thanks for joining us once again, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, Rob.